everything. I'm doing it. And good afternoon and welcome to West Hartford High School Sports presented by the War Chief Sports Council in conjunction with WHC TV. Today, girls softball. It's the Connor Chieftains host the Hall Warriors. Hi again, everybody. Pete Lammer along with Jeff Kapowitz and our fine crew led by Jen Evans. Game today, Jeffrey, a contrast in styles. You got all the youngsters for Hall, five underclassmen they start against this veteran group from Connor. It should be an interesting afternoon. It should be, uh, and, the, and the approach is so much different. You've got a veteran team at Connor that has shown success, and then it's all about the process at Hall because uh, you got young players that uh, need to learn to the game at a different level. One out, nobody on as we start here in the top half of the first inning. Bridget Garrick, who has pitched every inning of every game for Connard in the last two-plus years on the mound, tied for third in all-time career victories as she has struck out Eleanor Leonidas to start the game, and it's pitcher against pitcher as Madison Manning starts this afternoon for the Hall Warriors. Garrick working with Sarah Hamilton as her catcher, and a swing and a miss for strike three, and very quickly two up and two down, both via the punch-up. Yeah, and uh, she looks like she's really on her game today, you know, uh, painting the strike zone, and uh, it's going to be a long day for Hall if they just don't uh, get get into that mode of hitting the base, base the uh, softball. Marissa Lazinsk standing in, and after a long conversation with Daniel Smith, the second-year head coach for Hall the other day, she was very, very high on her freshman shortstop. Solid contact hitter, said one of the best freshmen to come along to this Hall team in quite a long time. Uh, I would agree with that, and she uh, does have a great approach at the plate and a uh, good future, really a wonderful future for her. Connor defensively, besides Garrick and Hamilton, the battery mates, Chris Walski at first, Andy Kirkland gets the start at the second base. Line drive hit to right, and the catch is made out in right field by Alyssa Rivera to retire the side. So the Warriors go quickly in the top half of the first. Three up, three down, nothing on, nothing across. Middle of the first inning here at Connor High School. It's Hall nothing, and Connor coming to bat as you watch on WHC-TV. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our participating sponsors, including those at the all-state level. Keating Insurance Agency, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Conard and Hall PTO, and Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks to those at the all-state level for their participation. So on the mound this afternoon is Madison Manning. Interesting story. Only her third start. She's part of the jazz band that toured Europe during April vacation. And, uh, again, that's one of the things you have to deal with uh, as a coach. And uh, you don't have any of those difficulties coaching uh, the uh, girls basketball, do you, Coach? <laughs> what? From time to time, yes, we do. Um, but, Stay but, Ma <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but Madison is uh, just a quality individual. I actually had her in seventh grade in, in my science class. So she was part of our uh, Opal team at King Philip. So she's a, she's a wonderful individual, and I 
wish her success. I haven't uh, seen her pitch this year, uh, at least not not at uh, for formative innings or more innings. But it looks like she's doing uh, a good job, a really good job. Hall coming off their first victory of the season yesterday as they were able to apply the mercy rule to Buckley, winning 15-1. to Took advantage of a lot of walks and four miscues, but they did have the bats come alive. One of the two times that uh, they had double figures in offensive output this year. Hall had a 13-run game in their loss against Farmington. Again, it's a 1-5 against 8-1 matchup here this afternoon. So leading off for Cotter will be the catcher, Sarah Hamilton. Sarah Hoisel and Krista Walski to uh, follow. One, two, and three in Tom Varengia's lineup. Bridget Garrick, Charlotte Leland, Liv Gagliotti, four through six. As the first pitch is taken high for ball one. Annie Kirkland, Alyssa Rivera, and Steph Caldero. The latter two are seniors who don't ordinarily play, but because it's the final home game in terms of them being seniors, they get the start today. There's a little looper in the left field that falls for a base hit. Gets by the left fielder. And on the second is Sarah Hamilton. So we'll score that a single and an E7. And immediately, Connard with a runner in scoring position and nobody down. Uh, if you watch Tommy Verenja at third base, he is he coaches. Uh, he's very aggressive on the base paths. He'd like to take advantage and challenges the defense to make a, make a play. Uh, in, against uh, Simsbury, watching them last week, uh, there was a home run. He 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 made them uh, made the runner come in, and then another time there was a possible home run, and she was thrown out at the plate. But I like that that play to be aggressive on the on the base paths and uh, and make make the defense make a play. Pitch gets away from the catcher and down to third is Sarah Hamilton. So she's just 60 feet away from scoring the first run here this afternoon off the wild pitch from Madison Manning. Betty Remagino Knapp has uh, come to the game today, and uh, while she is here, we just want to say thanks to her for all of her tremendous work. She's going to be retiring soon and certainly will be missed by coaches, players, and fans alike throughout all of West Hartford. Line drive, looped into short left field. That's a base hit as Sarah Hoysel gets the second hit of the inning. Connard enjoying a 1-0 advantage as they bat here in the bottom half of inning number one. So here's Krista Walski, and talking to head coach Ferengia before the game, he said she's been one of the true consistent performers offensively for his team so far this year. Yeah, she's got a great approach to, to hitting the uh, softball, and I like, I like the idea that she goes down the middle and inside outs to, to right field. She is really solid that way. She's trying to go opposite field that way as a right-handed hitter as she fouls it down the right field side. Just underway, glad you've joined us here on WHC-TV, our continuing coverage sponsored by the War Chief Sports Council. And the pitch is low. Runner had a big advantage off third and then scampers back to the bag. Only blemish on the year so far for the Chieftains, a 5-2 setback at Perennial Power Southington a while back. Big headlines that Southington actually lost a game the other day to Fitch 2-0 and won 73 games in a row. Hadn't lost since April 8th back in 2013. Ball gets away from the catcher. Onto the plate comes Hoysel, and she scores the second run of the opening inning. So tough start for Madison Manning in terms of her control. And she's given freshman catcher Riley Griffith a workout so far here, Coach, in the uh, opening inning. Yeah, it's, it, it's tough on the catcher when, when the pitchers don't, don't find the strike zone. There's ball four. So three batters up and three batters on for this counter team. And now Bridget Garrick will stand in trying to help herself. So much is made about Bridget's excellence on the mound. As we said earlier, she's tied for third on the all-time victories list as she drives one to deep right field, and that's over everything. Extra bases, 
as Wolski's going to round third. She's going to come to the plate. They get the ball towards the infield. Tom Varengia waving the runner on. It's going to be a two-round homer for Bridget Garrick, and the Chieftains are off and running, leading by the score of 4 nothing. And, again, Tommy, he, he just wants his runners to challenge every defensive play, and in that case, uh, you know, it's – it's over over the right fielder's head, and uh, you got to hit a relay, a good throw from relay, and a good throw home, and it just didn't happen for Hall. What a long blast that was! I imagine that's what a uh, Jeff Kaplowitz three iron looks like when you get it up into that good breeze. Uh, more like Tommy Varengia. If I played a lot of golf with Tommy, that's that's more Tommy's Tommy's deal. <laughs> There's a mile-high pop-up on the right side of the infield, calling for it the second baseman, Wislowski, and she puts it away for the first out of the inning. So one out and nobody out with four runs in. And now one of the other consistent offensive performers is Charlotte Leland stepping to the plate. Charlotte has started at third base since 2014. as Liv Gagliotti stands in, and a foul ball. Liv is an interesting story. Missed all of last year with a blood clot and a blood disorder, and it's just remarkable that she's even back on the field. I love to see that with high school athletes. They get a limited time to play, and if they have the opportunity to make the best of it when they come back after an injury, uh, you know, all, all power to them. It's, that's, that's wonderful to hear. Swing and a ground ball to short. Charging as Lazinska running gun in time for the out. That's that strong arm that her head coach, Daniel Smith, was talking about. And that's two outs in the inning. Boy, when you're playing that position, Jeff, you just don't really have a lot of time. you got to field, throw all in one motion, and have a gun, and she certainly does. Yeah, that was a wonderful play. I mean, she basically uh, squared up on the, on the softball and made a, a – through a P, basically, to first base. Yeah. So it's Annie Kirkland, who's usually the starting right fielder, but again, Coach Varengia mixing things up today to accommodate the seniors in an altered lineup. There's a drive to deep right center field, and that's going to be in for extra bases. Here's Kirkland rounding first, rounding second, heading towards third, and she's going to be in there with a stand-up two-out triple. Boy, the balls have been tagged and tagged to the opposite field so far. And I, and I love that approach, uh, the idea of hitting it back to the pitcher and that wedge from the pitcher to second baseman. I mean, you're able to get the outside pitch and driving it. I mean, that's uh, Derek Jeter. <laughs> that's what he that He made a career out of that. And that's a great approach to put hitting, hitting a softball. So Kirkland at third with two down. Alyssa Rivera getting the start in right field today. It's a no ball, one strike count as Madison Manning comes plateward and misses inside low. It's ball one, one ball, and one strike. If Rivera can reach, then Steph Cordero would hit, and that would mean Connard would have batted around here in the opening inning. Swing and a line drive to right. That's in for a base hit. Off the right fielder's glove. On her way to second is Alyssa Rivera, and she's there with a single and an RBI and a 5 nothing lead for the Chieftains here in the opening inning. So, so far, Connor doing to Hall what the Warriors did to Buckley yesterday, have that big opening inning. Warriors scored nine times in the opening frame yesterday en route to their first win as the pitch is low and inside for a ball to Coral Darrow starting in left field here this afternoon. Five hits in the inning. Five have scored. They also took advantage of a walk to Krista Wolski. And there's a called strike on the inside corner. Overcast skies. Game time temperature today, about 59 degrees. Still a little nippy for the end of April. So it's cut out and missed. And Madison Manning, one strike away from working out of further difficulty here in the first inning. Here's the pitch on the way, and that's called strike three, 
And that's the out that retires aside. But the damage done, five runs, five hits, one walk, an error, and a runner left stranded in scoring position. After one here at Conard High School, it's the Chieftains five, the Warriors no score, as you continue to watch West Hartford High School sports presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on WHC-TV. And the War Chief Sports Council would like to thank our participating sponsors at the captain's level. Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, and Coastal Tool and Rob Ludgan. At the all-conference level, Allied Printing and the Hartford Golf Club. And all of our many sponsors at the varsity level, Low Tide Photography, Cork and Bottle, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, Dave Newman Photography, West Hartford Youth Basketball, the West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball Team, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance Agency, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, and West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. Thanks to one and all for your sponsorship of the War Chief Sports Council so that we may bring games like this to you on WHC TV. So Bridget Garrick to the mound for her second inning of work. As, as we wait for the Hall Warriors, and it'll be four, five, and six. It'll be the Amato Twins, followed by Ryan Sandler, due up here against Bridget Garrick. Bridget, the CCC West All League selection last year, and very deservedly so, as the first pitch is high to Isabel Amato. She's a volleyball player, isn't she? Yep, played for me on the JV uh, volleyball team at, at Hall this season. And, uh, it, it, you know, hitting hitting now uh, uh, in the cleanup spot. So that, that's great on, on the Hall side. Daniel Smith said that it's, it's based on all of her hard work during the winter as she takes a strike. She said nobody worked harder in the offseason. And Isabel is going to play on the travel team this upcoming summer. And she said just can't wait to see how all that hard work materializes and it has so far in the early go right she's, she's got a great approach in the sense that she's intelligent about it she knows what she can do uh you know at at different stages and and she's coming on and this is really good to see it's a nice future for her two two pitches foul back off the screen in front of us lou urso the man in blue behind the plate today calling the balls and strikes veteran umpire that uh, oh I've seen maybe five dozen times here in the last 12 years pitch day's eye a full count to Isabel Amato with her twin sister Grace in the on deck circle Isabel leading off here in the top half of the second inning and she takes called strike three on the outside corner one away and that's three punch outs already for Garrick who's had at least five games this year with double digit strikeouts yeah, um, that was a tough pitch, pitch to handle and a tough pitch to lay off with that count, with that full count. Big swing and a miss by Grace Amato, and it's no balls and one strike. Garrick, pretty fast worker as she comes low and inside and evens the count at a ball a strike. And the 1-1 pitch is lined down the right field line, but a foul ball. Solid contact that time by Grace Amato. Just has to straighten it out. Yeah, I, right then, right there, she basically she uh, went went with the pitch and hit it really hard to the right side of the infield. Uh, I really like that approach. And this one came straight back, so she was just right off of that. She just missed that one. And the count is at one ball and two strikes. We see Garrick on the mound. We talked about being third all-time in victories as the pitch is line foul again. Count stays two and two. And she also helped herself with the bat with that two-run homer in the bottom half of the first inning. She now has 59 career RBIs. So that's a player for Tom Varencia that is getting it done offensively and defensively. Yes. Very, very much so. <laughs> that 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 is a real plus for for his softball team. A team that was just 11 and 10 a year ago, but it was interesting to look at as it's cut out and missed. 
Ball is dropped by the catcher. She'll have to throw to first. And the throw is in time for the out. Late call by the base umpire. So that's actually going to be K-2-3 if you're scoring at home. And that's four punch outs here in the opening inning. As uh, the opening inning in two-thirds, I should say, for Bridget Garrick. So we thank, thank Betty and staff. Thank you. Yeah. Ryan Sandler standing in. Cut on and missed for a strike. There's a swing and a foul, first base side. You'll need two of them. Ryan Sandler standing in. She had the key hit in yesterday's win over Buckley. It was a two-run double. It's part of that 15-run onslaught for the Warriors. As the pitch comes plate where it is nubbed at home plate, foul. And Garrick one strike away from striking out the side. A lot going on today at the Conard High School Complex. We see lacrosse down to our left as the pitch stays high for a ball. It's a one ball, two strike count with two outs and nobody on here in the top half of the second inning. Hamilton gives the sign. Line drive, base hit down the left field line. And it gets by the left fielder. Rounding first, heading to second. It's a two out double for Sandler. So she had the two run double yesterday. And she delivers the first hit and becomes the first base runner this afternoon for Hall. Solid line drive, Jeff, down the left field line. Right. She took that inside pitch uh, where it was pitched and just pulled it hard right by, past the third baseman. So here's Riley Griffith, and she fouls it off first base side. Riley, one of the catchers on this team, as she platoons along with Molly Sullivan. Freshman and one of the two big freshmen that uh, give reason for optimism for this Hall Warrior team. Swing and a foul off the screen in front of us. When she doesn't catch, she goes and plays in right field because, according to Coach Smith, don't want to take her bat out of the lineup. Pitches outside for a ball. It's a one ball, two strike count with two outs and a runner standing at second. And the one, two. Nubbed to the pitcher's mound, fielded by Garrick, throws to first for the out. That retires his side. So in the inning, no runs, a hit, and a runner left stranded at second. Middle of the second here in West Hartford, it's Connard 5 and Hall no score on WHC-TV Channel 5 here in West Hartford. See Tom Varengia talking to his catcher. Always teaching. That's what you coaches always do. Always teaching, right, Jeff? A absolutely. It's it's a process, and you want each day uh, your players to basically approach practice and approach games with the improvement in mind. And that particular improvement is sometimes personal improvement or what you can do for the team. I really like the approach that uh, the last few batters had for Hall. Uh, a couple of the foul balls were straight back, so they're just missing them. And, of course, that line drive uh, double was, uh, show, shows, uh, shows that they do have uh, their, the Connor pitcher uh, in, their, in their sights right now. Good, solid contact. And they fouled a lot of balls off, too, so it's not like Bridget Garrick is overpowering them for sure. Well, the, la the, last, few, the last few batters, certainly, when you foul the ball straight back, you, you're just missing it. You're just missing it. Change in the Connor lineup, yeah. Oh, theirs. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so 11 for 12 on the Hall lineup. Is that Molly Sullivan for Riley Griffith? Is that the move there? Okay. So, bottom of the second inning. And here's Sarah Hamilton batting for the second time. And she drives one a mile high, deep left center field. The center fielder goes over, makes a nice catch. 
Eleanor Leonidas, a beautiful catch deep in the left center field, robbing Sarah Hamilton of extra bases. And that's a very loud out here to start things in the bottom of the second. Great range in the outfield. Yep, that was way up there, and she moved to her right and uh, took control. So, uh, Shannon Manchester in the left field uh, yielded to her. Now Manchester has a chance to make a catch, and she does. So very quickly, two outs, both Sarah Hamilton and Sarah Hoysel hitting the ball high into the air. And Krista Walski stands in. She walked and scored as part of that five-run first inning frame for the home team. And she drives one to deep center field, and Leonidas isn't going to get this one. It goes way over her head. Extra bases as Wolski, round second, heads to third. Pretty good relay by the Warriors, and that'll hold Wolski to a two-out stand-up triple. That was certainly belted as hard as Bridget Garrick's two-run homer that highlighted the bottom of the first. And now Connard, a base runner at third with two down here. And again, the approach is to hit the ball up the middle or towards the right side, and uh, that, that was great contact right there. So here's Bridget Garrick standing in. Thank you, Meredith. As Bridget had that two-run homer in the first, and she's got another RBI opportunity here with Wolski standing at third. Fly ball, right center field. Leonidas has this one measured, and she drops it. It goes off of her glove. A run comes in to score. That was a tough play, aided by the win that time. And Garrett goes standing at second with a 6-0 lead. So tough chance out there in right center field. The wind seems to be moving in that direction, and uh, that ball just got kept floating away from the center fielder. And we have a pinch runner as Garrick comes out and stepping up is Charlotte Leland, who popped the third her first time up. Charlotte, a 350 lifetime hitter. Been the everyday third baseman for Tom Varengia's team since 2014. She's fifth all time on the Connard list with 77 career hits. And she certainly anchors along with Sarah Hoisel the left side of that Connard infield. Swing and a foul. And it's no balls and one strike. Two outs, runner at second. There's a swing and a line drive into left center field, and that gets by the left fielder. Into score is Sandler. Into second is Leland. It's an RBI double, and it's the second run of the inning, and the countered lead grows to 7 to nothing. Yeah, again, taking where the pitch was, it was in the inside half of the plate and uh, hitting a line drive into that gap. So the extra base hits a plenty so far for this Connor team as Liv Gagliotti stands in and fouls the first pitch off. Liv bounced out to the shortstop, Lazinsk, who made a nice play with a good, hard, accurate throw. Two-out magic here for the Chieftains. After, and she got hit with the pitch. So after the first two batters fly out to left, they've gone triple, double, double, and hit by pitch. And there are two on with two out and two in as deuces are wild here in the bottom of the second. And Andy Kirkland stands in. She had a triple her first time up. So the counter Chieftains, eight hits so far, and five of them have been for extra bases. A swing and a miss, strike one. Molly Sullivan, now the catcher replacing Riley Griffith behind the plate for this Hall team. She's uh, much more of a veteran presence back of the mound. Ground ball wide of third into left field. That's a base hit. All the runners advance 60 feet, and the bases are now loaded. So the usually aggressive Tom Varengia coaching third, he holds up the runners there, and wisely so because that's one time I, I think you don't want to challenge. 
No, I, I don't think he had any choice right there. That ball got uh, – Shannon Manchester got the ball in pretty quickly, and there was no uh, way that the runner could advance. So here's Alyssa Rivera. She had an RBI single her first time up. And the pitch from Madison Manning is low for a ball. Leland the runner at third, Gagliotti at second, Kirkland at first with two outs and two in. There's a strike on the inside corner. As we saw the rather expanded and liberal strike zone of Lou Urso that time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, Madison's just struggling with her location right at the moment. And, but now she's got the inside uh, corner part of the plate, uh, two, two pitches in a row. So let's see what she can do as far as a punch out if that, and uh, secure this inning. Two and two to the batter, Rivera. Swing and a miss, strike three. <laughs> Retired the side. So she works out a further difficulty, but Connard strikes for two more. Two runs, four hits, a hits batsman, and the bases left loaded. Two innings in the books here in West Hartford. Connard in front of Hall, seven to nothing. As you watch, West Hartford High School Sports here on WHC TV Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council. A reminder to join us for our next broadcast. Take place on Thursday afternoon. May the 19th will start at 4 o'clock, and it will be Hall against Connard Lacrosse. First the girls at 4, then the boys at 6. We're broadcasting both halves of the doubleheader, and then we'll conclude the May portion of our broadcast coverage on May the 23rd. Hall against Connard. Baseball action at the University of Hartford. That's the Mayor's Cup game. I'm always the one who calls it the Mayor's Trophy game. Why? Because I'm used to all of those Mets-Yankee exhibition games for how many years right. it was the Mayor's Trophy and game. being a New Yorker, never saw it on TV because those were blackout games. <laughs> so you had, to, you, had to get your, you had to get your tickets to go see it. Right. Uh, we would hear it on the radio, but that, that was a lot of fun in those Mayor's Trophy games, really, especially in the early days of the Mets. Uh, they struggled quite a bit those first two seasons, 62 and 63. Uh, 120 losses in the first year and yeah. well over 100 in the second year. <laughs> and if my Cincinnati Reds have any injury troubles this year, they're going to challenge that 120 losses before all the time. Or if they had to play the Mets every game, Mets have now beaten the Reds 11 times straight over the last uh, three years. 7 nothing. Connard in front as we play in the top half of the third inning. And it's Shannon Manchester leading off for Hall and swings and misses at the Bridget Garrick offering. And it's no balls and one strike. Shannon Manchester, Caroline Wislowski, and Eleanor Leonidas, 8-9-1 in Daniel Smith's order here in the top half of the third inning. Cut on and miss for strike two. And it's no balls and two strikes. So I didn't know that. No Channel 9, no Channel 11 for those games back in the day. No, and I actually know, knew uh, somebody who actually played on the 63 Mets, uh, an un <laughs> a player by the name of Teddy Schreiber. Uh, he played one season in the, in the major leagues for the Mets the entire season. Uh, interestingly enough, his uh, batting average and his slugging average was exactly the same because he only got base hits. <laughs> and, then, and then became a math teacher in the New York City schools. <laughs> There's a bouncing ball to second, and the underhand toss to first for the out, and that's one out here in the third inning. So Caroline Wozlowski will stand in. Junior second baseman, three-year starter. And what Danielle Smith said about her, quite an honor to become a captain of this team as a junior, Jeff. Speaks volumes, says like I have another coach on the field. Yeah, leader, leadership is that, is that quality that when you find it, you have to reward it because it makes the chemistry of the team and the product that you have on the field so much better, so much better. Makes a real, real big difference, that's for sure. She bats here with one out and nobody on here in the top half of the third. And she takes a strike on the inner half. One ball, two strikes. With one out, nobody on here in the third. Strike three on the outside corner. That's the second out of the inning. And that's already five punch outs for Bridget Garrick on the hill in just two and two-thirds innings today. 
And back to the top of the order, Eleanor Leonidas, a strikeout victim, her first time up. And she fouls off the first pitch at no balls and one strike. Eleanor made that tremendous catch, ranging far into left center field in the bottom half of the second and almost made another circus catch into right center, just having the ball deflect off her glove. She nubs one left side, backhanded by Hoysel, and it gets through into left field. And we'll defer to official scorer Jeff Kaplowitz on that one. <laughs> but here's here, here's a case, though, fundamentally, Jeff, where she's got to she took it for granted. She's got to get in front of that ball. Right. I don't even think I don't even think she she got a glove on it. And if she didn't, we'll give her a we'll give a base hit. Okay. So two out single for Eleanor, and Madison Manning steps in. Pitcher against pitcher. The base hit, the second of the game for the Warriors. They got that two-out double from Sandler last inning. Cut out and missed for a strike. Manning trying to continue the inning for Marissa Lazinsk, who is in the on-deck circle for Hall. Swinging a foul off the screen in front of us. Connor, as we said, this is the final game of the first half of the season for them, and they'd like to get to the 9-1 and one mark. Off the glove of the third baseman and no play. Hit very, very hard by Manning that time. And that's a base hit. As as much as Charlotte Leland probably thinks that she should have had that one, that was hit really, really hard to her left, Jeff. Yes, very tough play. Very tough play. And, uh, you know, the hitters in softball, because it's such a short distance, when they load, uh, they got to do it really quickly. And um, when I was uh, the hitting coach for uh, the softball team a couple of years ago at Hall, uh, I liked some of our players to actually load that left shoulder before the pitch. And that way the turn and the hands are just quick through the strike zone. Good, good sage advice for sure. So here's Lazinsk who flied out to the right fielder, Rivera, her first time up. Nubs one to third. This time it's fielded by Leland, wins the race to the bag, five unassisted, side retired. So all threatens, but they don't score. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left. We go to the bottom of the third here at Connard High School with the Chieftains up by a touchdown. It's Connard 7, Hall no score on WHC-TV, Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And the aforementioned council would like to thank our participating sponsors at the all-state level, Keating Insurance Agency, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, the Connard and Hall PTO, and Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks to one and all at the all-state level for their patronage and participation to allow these games to be broadcast to you. Paul McConnell, who does uh, such a great job as co-president of the council, along with Dennis Swanton, and uh, what a great undertaking it is for those guys and everybody involved to uh, be the leaders of this fine booster club. I I think it's one of the real magic magical things about West Hartford. Uh, I coached here for so many years, and I know all the coaches just appreciate their efforts. The whole idea of having an outside group uh, really in your corner and, and uh, supplying you with the things that you need and the, and the athletics is, is fabulous, and uh, they should be applauded uh, over and over again. Well said. And uh, we certainly do. And we're very, very happy to bring these games to you as a part of their dedication to the many fine women and men who play, coach, and are associated with uh, all of the uh, sports programs here, especially at the high school level in West Hartford. So here we go to the bottom half of the third inning. Connor trying to add to what is a 7-0 advantage. Steph Caldero leads off. She takes a strike. She was a strikeout victim her first time up. Two strikeouts this afternoon for Madison Manning, making her third start of the season for the Hall Warriors. And Caldero takes outside for a ball, one ball and one strike. 
Back to the top of the order to Hamilton and Hoysel. 9-1-2 and two for Tom Varenci in this bottom half of the third inning. And the 1-1 comes Plateward. It's dubbed right side. Fielded by Wislowski. Her throw to first is in time for the first out here in the third inning. I really like what's what's happened since Sullivan has come in the game. The battery right now is uh, where they're pitching inside out, up and down, and really keeping Conard off off their pace right now. It's an interesting dichotomy that they have behind the plate. You have the inexperienced but better hitter who started the game, and the adjustment was made, as you said, after the first inning, and defensively and pitching-wise are much better off. Well, you know, I, I know pitchers in the major leagues uh, in baseball that basically only want to pitch to one catcher for that reason. And uh, that's not to take anything away from the other catchers on the, on the team, but the dynamic, that, that intrinsic thing that goes on between pitchers and catchers is uh, become apparent right here in this inning. When John Lester signed for $136 million with the Cubs, he said, for another million a year, you have to bring David Ross over to be my personal catcher just to speak to that point that you made. And there are a lot of examples like that in, in the major leagues. I know in Cincinnati when the Reds had Bronson Arroyo, he always pitched to Ryan Hannigan. So chemistry is a big part of sports, as you know. Absolutely, and especially the, the battery, the battery here in a softball or a baseball game. And it's nice to see it, see it here. One ball and two strikes to Sarah Hamilton, who's one for two on the afternoon. Singled and scored in the first, flied out to left. Swing and a miss for strike three, dropped by the catcher, and it's picked up and thrown to first for the out. So K2-3 on that one. And that's a third strikeout in the second out of the inning. And all of a sudden, Hall has uh, gotten three batters in a row out for the first time this afternoon. And Sarah Heusel will step in. But before she does so, timeout for Molly Sullivan to uh, tie her cleats. Sarah's one for two. Singled and scored. Pops one up first base side. Calling for it, Isabel Amato. She makes the catch. And that's a very impressive 1-2-3 inning for Madison Manning. Three up, three down, nothing on, nothing across. Four in a row retired by Manning. We'll head on to the fourth inning here at Goddard. With the Chieftains in front of the Warriors, 7 to nothing, here on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And has uh, happened so much in, in baseball and in softball. Uh, Isabella Amato is going to lead off the inning, making the last out of the uh, last half of the frame. Isn't that amazing how that, how that happens? Okay, a lot of changes coming in for Connor. All right, 25 for 8. Okay. Uh, 23 for 13. And 5 for 4. We got 25 for 8, 23 for 13, and 5 for 4. Thank you very much. Um, and number 9 is going into the right field spot. Okay, thank you. So Annie Kirkland goes to right as wholesale change is made by Tom Varengia. As the sun comes out here at Connard High School, almost halfway through the contest here as we go to the fourth inning. Isabel Amato, Grace Amato, Ryan Sandler, four, five, and six in the hall order. As they get set to face Bridget Garrick. Bridget on the mound, scattered three hits so far through three. No walks, five strikeouts. And the first pitch is off the outside corner for ball one, one ball and no strikes. Corner infielders are just inside the bags, respectively, as the ball is fouled back into the golf course. Do you play there much, Jeff? 
<laughs> I have <laughs> a number a number of times uh, over the years. I've been here in West Hartford since 1980, and uh, I've I've been a member at at Rockledge and other places, but played at Rockledge quite often. With, with Tommy Bringer and a couple of times too. <laughs> Bouncing ball back to the mound, fielded by Garrick. Hard throw on to first for the first out of the inning. So one out and nobody on. And Grace Amato steps in. She, too, a strikeout victim her first time up. It was the old K-2-3. Sarah Hamilton had dropped the third strike but had to throw on to first to Krista Walski to complete that out. Pitch is low for a ball, one ball and no strikes. Sarah Hamilton giving the sign, and the pitch is swung on and popped up first base side, and running out of room as Walski gave it a good effort, but it lands foul over by a nice contingent of fans down the first base side. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Grace did this the first time up. Uh, she spoiled a lot of pitches before she went down on the strikeout. Uh, she also played volleyball for me in the, in the fall. Uh, and there's a base hit right there. Nice, solid line drive over the shortstop's head. And uh, she got, got it in fair territory, so that's great great for her. Yeah, great solid contact that time. Good effort by Sarah Hoisel at short, but to no avail. And Amato has her first hit of the afternoon, and that's four hits now for the visitors. So here's Sandler, who's been double happy the last two days. Two-run double yesterday in the win over Buckley and had a two-base hitter first time up here this afternoon. That was the first hit that they got off Garrick, and they've had three more since. Cut on and missed. Throw down to first, not in time. Good aggressive idea by Sarah Hamilton. As we talk about this Connor team and make comparisons to the 11 team that won the championship, game that I was privileged to call on a win over West Hill down at West Haven as it's popped up foul in back of us. They had a great catcher, Jeff, by the name of Danny Stevens on that team, who in the first inning of the championship game against West Hill Threw out a runner at third and threw out a runner at second. West Hill had four hits in the inning and got only one run. Line foul on the third base side. So if they get any type of defensive effort like that from Hamilton, certainly going to help them down the stretch as they go for another title. Well, that's uh, Johnny Benchlike uh, talking about your uh, your Cincinnati Reds. That definitely is something special. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no doubt about it. I don't know if you played the great game Stratomatic as a kid. I still play it at age 50. Um, he was a minus He was a minus four arm every year, and you haven't seen a catcher. Besides, Pudge Rodriguez have a minus four since. Yeah. That was a favorite game of David Eisenhower, who is son of, uh, of Ike. Yeah. yeah, tremendous game, tremendous game. Loved it, absolutely loved it. And, and, you know, it's funny. I have the computer version, but I got the uh, – I got the cards, and I still play the board version. Uh, I'm, I'm old-fashioned that way. But uh, for, those, for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, it's a, it's a great strategy game with dice and cards. But really, if you have any aspirations to uh, be a manager or coach of any of the four major sports, I play all four, as a matter of fact. And I'll get your opinion and comment off air about this, but I used to play the basketball game religiously, and based on that, I'd always tell you that the two best teams I ever saw, the 83 Sixers and the 86 Celtics, impossible to beat in that game. There's call strike three, and the out that retires the side. They get a hit, and they leave one. Middle of the fourth here in West Hartford, 7 nothing Connard. As you watch West Hartford High School Sports, on WHC-TV Channel 5, as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank those at the captain's level. The supporters there include Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, the Babe Ruth Organization, and Coastal Tool and Rob Ludkin. Also those at the all-conference level, Allied Printing, and the Hartford Golf Club, and the very many participating sponsors at the varsity level, Low Tide Photography, Cork and Bottle, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, Dave Newman Photography, West Hartford Youth Basketball, West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball, Open Arm Christian Ministries, 
Final Cut Barbershop, Edward Connors Insurance, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, and West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. Thanks to one and all for your participation. So more changes for Connor. Caldero. So bottom half of the fourth inning. My favorite team in Stratomatic Bay, since we're, we're bringing that up for yeah. our old timers, was the 86 Mets. Oh. Uh, goodness gracious. We <laughs> I did a long run with those, that team. And I know as a Red Sox fan, you're probably, <laughs> probably not, as, not as comfortable for you to talk about that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm Cincinnati first, Mets second, and the Red Sox, Red Sox third. So, uh, so I'm going to... Uh, we're going to talk about that more in a second. As Wolski bounces the third, goes off the third baseman's glove and down the left field line. And we're going to score that in E5. So Wolski at first. And here's Bridget Garrick. If she can manage a triple and a single, she's halfway to the cycle. Two-run homer in the first, RBI double in the second. Scored in the first, had a pinch runner score for her in the second. Line drive, base hit in the left field. And they're at first and second. And lo and behold, for Garrick now, single, double, homer. And her three times up. So we're going to impress Jeff here. We're going to tell you that at first it was Keith Hernandez, Wally Backman and Tim Tuffle in the second base platoon, with Santana at short, platoon at third with Howard Johnson and Ray Knight. George Foster in left. Platoon in center of Lenny Dykstra, Mookie Wilson. Daryl Strawberry around and right. Also had Danny Heap on that team. Ed Hearn backing up the late, great starting catcher, Gary Carter. And you had your starting five of Doc Gooden, Ron Darling, Sid Fernandez, Bobby Ojeda, and the occasional Ed Lynch with Jesse Orozco and Roger McDowell in the bullpens. And uh, how was that? Was that a pretty good start? Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Fernandez, who basically was the start of the entire year, was middle relief, long relief in that in that World Series. Yeah, he was. Rick Aguilera, got to throw his name in there too. Went on to be a great closer with the Minnesota Twins. So two on, and we have the pinch runner again for Connor. As Michaela Murphy. Bats for the first time. She took over for Charlotte Leland, who left going one for two. And a swing and a miss for a strike. Even the count at a ball and a strike. Tom Varengia said before the game, one of the challenges for him in softball is trying to find for your reserves applicable playing time and it's not easy to do especially when you have 11 seniors on the team uh, absolutely i mean i'm looking from a basketball uh you know free free substitution and you have the opportunity to give players playing time uh but in uh, softball uh you don't have that luxury so he uh clearing the bench today three balls and one strike after the wild pitch, the runners moved up to scoring position at second and third. And it swung on, popped up on the infield. Calling for it is Lezinsk, and she makes the catch for the first out. That's a big first out for the Hall defense. And now Liv Gagliotti will bid for her first hit of the afternoon. She was hit by a pitcher last time up, also grounded out to short, so officially she's 0 for 1 on the afternoon. Bats with runners at second and third, one out here in the fourth. And she swings and flies one to center field, making the catch Leonidas out there. Tagging from third, coming in to score is Wolski with the eighth run. So sacrifice fly to center, run batted in, and it's 8 nothing for Goddard. And the inning still continues with a runner in scoring position and two outs for Andy Kirkland. Swung on, nub towards short, caught by Lezinks for the out. That retires the side. 
So in the inning, one run, one hit, an error, and a runner left stranded at second. We move on to the fifth inning here at Conard High School with the Chieftains in front of the Warriors, 8-0, as you watch West Hartford High School Sports is presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on WHC-TV Channel 5. Just some bookkeeping here, Jeff, if I could. Ryan Sandler, she grounded out the second. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah I was just, I, I had uh, I had uh, missed that one as Bridget Garrick takes them on for her warm-up tosses, working with Sarah Hamilton. Talking about Sarah Hamilton, what a stalwart she's been for this Chieftains program. Four-year varsity player, starting catcher since a sophomore, and scoring a team high. 27 runs last year in 2015. And on a team that wasn't all that offensively gifted. So for her to put up that type of a mark says something about her consistency offensively. Yep, you got to get on base and, and uh, you know, via the hit or, or the walk. And then you have to be a pretty uh, savvy base runner uh, to score those runs. Uh, that's just uh, something that I was not aware of. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little different here in the softball game versus versus baseball. But of course, you're a veteran softball person, so you know all the subtleties and nuances. No, oh, seriously, and and uh, so Lou Urso, the home plate umpire, going to dust off home plate before we begin things here in the, the fifth inning. The Hall Warriors. After today, go home for a six-game homestand, and it's interesting because they didn't play during April vacation because of all the players that they had travel. They've had a couple of weeks where they had to play four times in a week, and that has to be taxing, especially if you're a pitcher and you're a catcher. Absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of work in a very short amount of time. There's a bouncing ball to third, fielded by Murphy. Her throw to first, safe, not in time, beaten out. Good hustle that time. Shannon Manchester. So Manchester gets her first hit of the afternoon. And the fifth hit for, for Hall. It was, a, it was a good play made by Murphy, just a better hustle by Manchester. A lot, a lot of hustle on Shannon's part. Shannon, Shannon played volleyball, and she also played so, uh, basketball for me uh, a couple, two years ago at the JV level. So... A lot of hustle. And she's the leadoff base runner as Caroline Wislowski stands in. Strikeout victim her first time. Throwback to first is not in time. Caroline also a field hockey player. Cut out and missed for a strike. One thing that we were able to do at the War Chief Sports Council, when we bring different games to you, is we're branching out a little bit compared to the 10 years of radio days where we did nothing but baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and softball. We did volleyball, as you know, in the fall. We're doing lacrosse in a couple of weeks. We're going to do field hockey next fall. There's called strike three, second out of the inning, second time that Wislowski's been fanned. And the strikeout total for Bridget Garrick now up to seven. Yeah, she's, uh, she's moving the ball in and out and got great movement on that fastball. And keeping the hitters off balance. Little uh, liner to second, caught there by the second baseman. The throw to first for a double play is not in time. So a humpback liner turned into the second out of the inning off the bat of Leonidas. And now Madison Manning, who had a hitter last time up, Stands in for the third time this afternoon. Struck out in the first, singled in the third, one for two on the day. And the first pitch is cut out and missed as she tried to chase some high cheese that time. No balls and one strike. Trying to keep the inning alive for Marissa Lazinsk. The fine hitting freshman shortstop. Cut out and missed. No balls and two strikes. It's another thing that Garrick's done today. For the most part, Jeff's worked ahead of the hitters for the, most of the day. Yeah, she had great control, and uh, she's spotting spotting her pitches. A great location today. Cut on and missed for strike three for the out that retires the side. Two strikeouts in the inning, no runs a hit, and a runner left stranded at first. Four and a half in the books with Connard in front. Eight nothing as you watch West Hartford High School sports 
here on WHC-TV Channel 5. Talked about the lacrosse that we'll be doing as the broadcast, the doubleheader broadcast, will be on Thursday, May 19th. We'll have the girls game for you that day at 4 o'clock, the boys at 6 o'clock. Boys lacrosse for Hall, 4-4 four and four on the season. They won their last contest. For Connard, they're 4-4, four and four, but the story with them, they started 0-4. They've won four consecutive games, so they've certainly turned it around. Girls lacrosse, Connard at 5-2. and two. They won their opening match of the season against Hall. Hall, in turn, the girls' team, won their second game to get 1-1. One and one. Unfortunately, they've lost six straight. They're hosting Simsbury right now. And playing right now at Hall, it's the baseball matchup between the Warriors and the Chieftains. As uh, Jeff Billings' team starting at 3-3. Three and three. And the Chieftains won their first game and, unfortunately, are now 1-7. and seven. So right now it's Hall against Connard over at the Hall field. Jeff Billing, the Hall baseball coach, an MIT graduate. Yes, and a pitcher there. Yeah. Uh, yes, he did He did play baseball. At least that's my understanding. Yep. So we get set for the bottom half of the fifth inning. If you joined us late, countered five runs in the first, highlighted by a two-run homer by Bridget Garrick. They added two in the second on back-to-back -back RBI doubles by Garrick and Charlotte Leland. And then they scored in the fourth a single run on a Liv Gagliotti sacrifice fly. And Lena Prieti stands in. Lines to first caught. Nice play by Isabella Amato, one away. So Prieti, who's been, according to head coach Tom Varengia, just a joy to coach at second base this year, did not start the game today because of what we talked about with all the seniors getting included. But uh, terrific player for his team, and one of the main reasons why with a win today they'll be 9-1. and one. Yes, and uh, certainly the second half of the season looks very promising for this team. So one out and nobody on. And a swing and a foul on the right field side. Connard's one loss, as we said, against Southington. A game that they lost 5-2, but it was a 3-2 game in the sixth inning that day. And Connard had runners at first and second, one out, couldn't score. And then the Blue Knights put it away with a two-run homer from their catcher in the bottom half of the inning. And Coach V says, hey, you know, we're going to get another shot at him, and they're going to play him here on, on their turf in another week or two. And it should be interesting uh, to watch there. There's strike three for the second out of the inning. But right now, the Connor Chieftains in the all-important Class L rankings are fourth right now. Cheshire's on top, NFA 2, Southington 3. And I think it was Connor either out of the four or five position in 2011 when they went all the way and, and won the title. I, I believe you're right. I believe you're right. And certainly Southington, um, they, they've been a juggernaut for years. Yeah, they really have. Baseball and softball and football, those three sports. I mean, you can just pencil them in year after year. Yeah, they're, they've got competitive programs right across the board. So two outs in the inning. And Sarah Hamilton pops one up right in back of us. And Meredith had to duck for cover that time. You know, if you look at my clipboard, it's busted from a ball that hit on there about five years ago. And, of course, I'm, I'm too frugal to go out and buy a new one. <laughs> That's the largest story here. Uh, I, I know what to get you for your birthday. Though. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That and the Stratomatic cards. <laughs> Cut on and missed by Hamilton. A strikeout that retires the side. So another good inning on the mound for Madison Manning as she puts down the Chieftains in order. Three up, three down, nothing on, nothing across. Five in the books here in West Hartford. And Connor continues to lead Hall 8-0 on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council.
Yeah, we were talking about the Southington team before. It's Pete Lamoureux and Jeff Kaplowitz back with you here. Sixth inning action in West Hartford at Conard High School. I had the great privilege at uh, radio station WNTY back in the 90s to uh, broadcast one season of their softball. I did a couple of years of the football. Do you know the average time of their games in the 1999 championship season? A ridiculous 48 minutes per contest. They had a pitcher who struck out 16.4 per game. Yeah. I mean, if you know the, the, the history of softball and the barnstorming games, uh, they had teams, uh, Eddie Fainer, King and his court, and uh, I'm trying to think of uh, Sarah Black, uh, Roselle Black, uh, the queen in her court, and they had only four players because the pitchers are so dominant in this game. And, and same with the yeah. – with the – the Blue Knights at, at times from year to year. Yeah. So here's Lazinsk, who's 0 for 2. Yeah. Flied out to right and grounded into a force play, five unassisted. That, um, that Rosie, the Rosie Black uh, team, the queen in her, queen in her uh, court, she challenged Major League play Baseball players before they even knew about it. It was ground ball to second, handled easily, uh, four to three. Um, and basically the likes of Willie Mays and, and your Johnny Bench, uh, you know, went down swinging very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Just let me know when you're off. And, you <laughs> and we were talking about the local star out of uh, Stratford, Connecticut, and the uh, Raybestos Briquettes back in the day, yeah. who then played for the Connecticut Falcons. Joan Joyce, a very famous pitcher. She went up against Eddie Cranepool of your Mets, and Eddie said, said to me later on when I saw him, he said, hey, I could have had 20 swings against her. I wouldn't have made contact once. So <laughs> it's all all relative, I guess. So here's Isabella Amato standing in, looking for her first hit. And she's got it. Base hit in the right field. So Isabel, who had struck out and bounced back to the box, now one for three on the day. And that base hit for the Warriors, their sixth of the day. They've had five singles and a double. So with Isabel Amato on first, her twin sister Grace stands in, who's one for two. Big swing and a miss at a high fastball that time. No balls and one strike. Line drive, base hit in the right center field. That's in the gap. Extra bases, and Hall could dent the scoreboard. Rounding third is Isabel Amato. She's going to score. It's an RBI triple for Grace Amato. Throw back to the bag, not in time. Hall on the scoreboard. It's 8-1. to one. Well, that follows up her base hit from, from her prior at bat, and uh, her approach today has been, been excellent. She's made contact. Even on the strikeout, she really uh, was on the pitches. So that, uh, that was a really line shot through the gap. Made great sound too, didn't it? <laughs> so the R. <laughs> so back to back hits in the inning. And the Warriors get on the scoreboard and trail it 8 to 1. Swing a mile high pop up right side of the infield. Calling for it as Wolski makes the catch. It's in play for the out. And it's an automatic sacrifice fly because the catch is made beyond the barrier that extends through the fence in front of us. So they allow the out to occur, but then it's an automatic one base advancement, and the runner happens to be on third, and she comes in to score. Sounds like the street rules that I used to use in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> you hit it off the elevated subway, and uh, you wait under under the subway and see, uh, or the L, yeah. and, and and you can catch it off the L. You know, five minutes later, and it, and it's out. <laughs> 
Everything's in play. <laughs> in New York City, everything is in play. <laughs> so that's about the shortest sacrifice fly that you'll get credit for. <laughs> she hit it about 25 feet to her right, and Sandler gets yet another RBI. Hall gets another run. It's 8-2. Pitch is low and inside. As Molly Sullivan stands in, and she bats with two outs and nobody on with the two runs in in the inning. One ball and two strike count. Ground ball through the legs of the pitcher, and by the time Hoysel fields it, she still makes the play. Deflected off the pitcher goes 1-6-3 for the out. That retires the side. But damage done in the inning by the Warriors, who score twice on two hits. Nobody left. We go to the bottom of the sixth. The score now, Connor 8 and Hall 2 on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. What a good play by Sarah Hoisel to stay with it that time. Absolutely. Any kind of there's de deflection off the pitcher and uh, the shortstop then has to uh, basically react. I mean, she did a great job. She fielded it cleanly and a nice strong throw to first base. She's going to continue her softball at the next level. Wonderful. Yeah, she's going to play at a manual college where my cousin Janet attended, but Janet probably wouldn't like me saying that she was part of the class of 1968, but that's okay. <laughs> As we have a meeting on the mound before Connor bats here in the bottom half of inning number six. And there you go again. Shortstop makes the nice play to end the inning, and then she comes to lead off here in the bottom of the inning. It's a couple times today. <laughs> I think that's that's just the rule of the universe right now, you know, and, and it happens so, so often, yeah. so, so often. Kind of nice for the announcers because uh, you can play off of that defensive play and, and have, have, the, have the offense, uh, the offense uh, follow it right up. Yeah. Thanks for a nat natural segue, that's, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> so it will be Hoisel and Wolski and Garrick, two, three, and four. Heart of the order coming up for Tom Varengia's team. Such a good athlete, you know, multi-sport athlete, and uh, very, very competitive, and just a, a a great individual. You know, speaking to her, uh, it's 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 just like uh, warm fall over. You know, she basically engages, and uh, she's a great person, just a great person. And her sister Becky, quite the athlete as well. Yes, ab absolutely. <laughs> And the first pitch of the bottom half of the sixth inning to Sarah Hoisel is taken high and outside for ball one. Sarah singled and scored on the first, flied out to left in the second, popped out to first in the third. She's one for three on the afternoon. Swinging a mile high pop up in the short left center field. Lazinks the shortstop calls and makes the catch for the first out of the inning. So, you know, it was kind of a rough start for Manning, obviously giving up the five runs and the first touched up for two in the second. But ever since then, one unearned run over the last three and a third. She's really settled down and handled herself quite well. Yes, absolutely. And uh, really uh, quite a contrast to those first two innings. So here's Wolski on base all three times and has scored three runs today. Has a triple sandwiched in between a walk and reaching on an E5. Head coach Ferengia had to almost run for cover that time. It's a tough spot being a third base coach when you got a righty pole hitter that's going to hit line drives. My advice to Tom, stay in the coach's box. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Ball low and inside to Wolski. Some offensive drama building for the Connor Chieftains because in the on-deck circle is Bridget Garrick, who has had single, double, homer, needs a triple for the cycle, which in the games that we've covered over the last 12 years, I know has only happened twice. Two ball, two strike count as Wolski bats with one out and nobody out here in the home half of the sixth inning. Sullivan puts down the side. Manning comes playward and is nubbed foul, third base side. 
And again, Wolski way out in front of that one. Two balls and two strikes. And again, the 2-2. Two -two. There's a ground ball, a short right through the legs of Lazinski in the left field. And we'll get her an E6 on that one. Hit very hard, but again, that's a play I think the freshman shortstop would tell you that she's going to make at least eight times out of ten. Well, what, you, what she's got to do is basically get the, get the glove on the ground and come up on any ground ball, especially one that's hit right at you. And that just didn't happen at that particular point. Uh, we see it at every level, you know, it's just sort of a, a, a lapse. But uh, she'll, she'll uh, get some coaching advice from uh, Danielle Smith, and uh, hopefully it won't happen again. Line drive, left field, over to left fielder's end. That's going to be extra bases. Wolski rounding third. She's going to come in to score. And here's the possible triple, and there's Garrick's triple, and there's the cycle on cue. How about that? You're clairvoyant there, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's fabulous. That is fabulous. That's that's an interview waiting to happen after the game. Right. <laughs> and she will be our special guest, by the way. Is uh, ready to talk to Coach V about that. The RBI, her fourth of the afternoon, and it has a seven-run lead again for the home team. Is Connor now up nine to two? And here's Murphy for her second time at bat. Michaela. Taking over for Charlotte Leland, who played the first couple of innings. Now the second at bat for Murph. And she nubs one towards short. The runner will score. The out is recorded at first for the second out of the inning as Garrick touches home plate. And the second run of the inning makes it 10-2 for the Connor Chieftains. So Murph gets an RBI for herself on the ground ball. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think you know, uh, Hall did what they needed to do and get that extra out in the inning. Driven to deep right center field off the bat of Gagliotti, who has her first hit of the day, and she's rounding second, heading for third. They get the ball into the infield, and she's going to be held at third. Here's a case in a normal game where Coach V is going to send her, but being the good sport that he is at 10-2 to 2 in front, that's why he held her at third, I think. Well, with this crosstown rivalry, uh, you know, it is a rivalry, but it's among friends. And, and uh, Tom chose a lot of class when he did that. And I was going to say, too, that when you have a rivalry among friends, as you so aptly put it, and, and you're right, it's very unique that way. Because i got to tell you, in a lot of other towns where you have two teams and two high schools in one town, it's not always the case. <laughs> No, no, and I know it all too well. You know, I have two daughters who graduated from Connor, and I'm teaching on the other side of town. So <laughs> I should, that's in my household. <laughs> Gagliotti does come in to score on the Aaron pitch. Third run of the inning makes it 11-2. to two. Well, I can tell you from experience in the town of Wallingford, which is not all that different in a lot of ways from, from West Hartford, but one way it is different is that Lyman Hall and Sheehan just have an absolute bitter drag them out no holes barred rivalry. And uh, I won't even begin to tell you the ways that that's been manifest over the years. Well, uh, you know, I think, I think what drew me to, to coaching and for, for so many years is competition. I, I just love competition, and uh, the score is, is really secondary. Uh, when you're coaching at this level and you're, you're teaching and you want your players to improve and have the best, uh, it's the competition that does that for you. It's, it's tight situations. It's, it's sometimes falling and, and failing and then coming back and being much more uh, razor sharp the next time. And bouncing ball to third. Nice play, and the out is recorded to retire the side. And I was going to finish that thought by saying that was no more evident than the difference between the first matchup of girls' basketball between Hall and Connor. I say that very seriously and very complimentary towards you and the second matchup. What a, what a 180 that was. And uh, that's my segue to saying, you know, on behalf of everybody in West Hartford, 
thank you for 10 great years with the girls' basketball program. And, and one of the great games that I had the privilege of doing was your game against Holy Cross in the quarterfinals in 2011. What a win that was. And uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you over the years uh, on, a, on a small basis. Well, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, talking about that second Connor game uh, in basketball, the, uh, my team and the, and the girls that played play for Hall, they were dedicated to basically making that improvement. And uh, our whole focus was execution. And uh, given those last uh, three minutes, uh, we gave Connor everything that they needed, uh, you know, everything we needed to do and uh, as much as they could handle. Yeah, that was one heck of a game, no doubt about it. And uh, privilege for all of us associated with uh, Channel 5 and the War Chief Sports Council to be able to, to bring to you. So last chance for the Hall team as uh, Connor with a 9-2 to advantage as we play here in the top half of the seventh inning and a swing and a foul. as Thalia Ortiz is the pinch hitter for Shannon Manchester, who had a one-for-two afternoon for herself. Cut on and missed for a strike. Eight, nine, and one in the order. Half swing and a miss, strike three, and that's the first out of the top of the seventh inning. So Garrick, who had two strikeouts in the first, two more in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, and now the first out in the seventh has nine punch outs this afternoon. As Wislowski takes a strike, Caroline looking for her first contact. She has two strikeouts to her credit. Swinging a foul at home plate. She's quickly behind in the count at no balls and two strikes. Looking ahead for Connard, we'll play Maloney of Meriden here on Wednesday. They get a little break, then they'll have a rematch against Simsbury next Friday. That game will be on the road. It's a game that Jeff watched last week when the Chieftains won 4-0 in between lightning rods. Cut on and missed strike three. That's 10 of them for Garrick, and now the Hall Warriors down to their final out. But the game's to circle if you're Tom Varengia. You have a home game against Glastonbury on the 11th of May, and then a week after that, Southington comes to town. And that should be one heck of a contest and certainly a battle of the upper echelon of Class L and CCC West, taken for a strike by Leonidas. She's one for three on the afternoon. Had her single back in the third inning. And she swings and she drives one deep down the left field line, just a foul ball. That's a long, long foul ball. That's, that certainly is. You know, um, Danielle Smith's got, got a great future with this, this team. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a process, but they're young enough and talent, talented enough to really make some strides in the next couple of years. It'll be fun to watch them evolve, that's for sure. They start five underclassmen, two of whom are – freshman as it's cut on and missed strike three and that'll do it for the game here this afternoon Connard wins it by the count of nine to two it's the 13th consecutive time that the Chieftains have beaten the Warriors going back to 2009 the last time the Warriors won was at Wolcott Park by the count of six to three so perfect decade but continues but I'm going to make the prediction Jeff that that's going to end in a couple of years down the road with all this young talent. Well, that's that's what I said. It, it, it's a process with a young team, and, and they show some things that are very, very positive and things to build on, and uh, under Danielle's uh, hand, uh, I look for great things to happen in the next couple of seasons. Jeff, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, if Moretti doesn't uh, – Come by. I'd love to have you back on, on the 23rd as well. Well, okay. That, that's my report card, and, uh, and thank you so much. You are, you are definitely the golden voice of West Hartford. Oh, thanks, John. I appreciate that. That was a lot of fun. Jeff Kappel is joining us today as 
big part of the broadcast, a 9-2 to two Connard victory. We're going to take a brief time out, and then we're going to come back with Bridget Garrick and uh, talk to her, the victorious pitcher here this afternoon, as the Chieftains win to go to 9-1 and one on the season. Back with more on WHC-TV Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council right after this.
Okay. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And welcome back, everybody, where we just watched the Connor Chieftains defeat the Hall Warriors for a 13th consecutive time going back to 2009. The final today was 9-2. to two. The pitching star, the hitting star, and the general star. Bridget Garrick joining us. Nice game today. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. On the mound, 10 strikeouts. Also, you became third on the all-time victories list. It's been quite a career for you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and as you're known as a great pitcher, also with the bat today, you became only the third player in the last 10 years of us broadcasting games to hit for the cycle. Mm -hmm. Were you thinking that coming up the final time? You had single, double, home, or you needed the triple. Is that uh, part of your mind? It wasn't my plan, no, but I was happy I got the bat around today. <laughs> Especially in the first inning. Talk about that two-run homer that you had. Kind of jump-started the offense. Yeah, I was hoping to get the team going there with that one, so, yeah. <laughs> so this 2016 edition, you're 9-1. and one. You start eight seniors on the squad. You've yeah. been together for a while. Do you feel the chemistry leading towards something that could be really big coming up in the next month? Definitely. I think the team has some pretty good goals. Um, we're all really close friends, too. So we've kind of grown up playing together. I think we've become pretty mature on the field, and I think we've got some pretty high hopes for this year. So, yeah. The chemistry really, really comes together and really looks like you have a good time together out there. Yeah, definitely, yep. Well, hopefully you get another shot uh, at Southington in a couple of weeks. If you don't knock them off now, maybe uh, come tournament time, and maybe you guys can uh, – do something that uh, when you were in eighth grade happened in this town. That yeah. was a 2011 championship. We're open for something like that, yeah. <laughs> well, Bridget, congratulations and best of success and uh, continued great work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bridget Garrick joining us today. Nine to two was the final score. Connor defeating Hall. They raised their record to nine and one in Tom Varengia's 21st and final season as the head coach of the Connor Chieftains. Many thanks to everybody involved with the broadcast, to Paul and Dennis from the War Chief Sports Council, to Diana and Meredith uh, doing a great job on TV along with Jen. And we'll say goodbye for the final time here this afternoon. Again, 9-2 to two was the final, Connor defeating Hall. And we'll see you for lacrosse on May the 19th. So long, everybody.